Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to the beginner series. In this beginning lecture, we are studying the diminution of vision, how to take the history and the important concepts in diminution of vision. Whenever a patient comes to you with the complaint of diminution of vision, there are certain leading questions that you need to ask the patient. Number one, what is the age of the onset of loss of vision? Number two, whether the loss of vision was gradual or was it sudden? Whether one eye was involved or both eyes were involved? or if at all both eyes were involved, how was the progression, whether both eyes were involved simultaneously or there was a sequential involvement of one eye after the other. After that, we have to characterize the vision loss by asking the patient about the duration of vision loss, whether the loss of vision has been present since months or weeks or years. Then how is the progression of vision loss? Was it steadily progressing? That means steadily deteriorating vision or the vision actually got worse and then it improved or the vision loss is static. Then what is the pattern of the vision loss? Whether it is constant vision loss or the vision comes back uh, again, the visual equity improves in between. So that is called intermittent pattern. And then whether the vision loss is present for distance or is it present for near or is it present for uh, both the distances. At the same time, you also need to ask whether it is periodic or episodic. Then always certain associated symptoms are uh, should be asked regarding the vision loss. That means whether uh, the patient has vision loss associated with pain or is there any redness associated, watering photophobia, photopsia that is flashes, floaters, diplopia that is double vision, positive or negative scotomas and peripheral field defects. So all these associated symptoms should be present in your history taking. When you ask the patient what is the uh, diminution, there's a complaint of diminution of vision, you have to tell whether it is associated with pain, redness, watering, photophobia, photopsias, floaters, diplopia, positive or negative scotomas, peripheral field defects, so on and so forth, right? So all these I will be covering in my subsequent lecture. Now, first let us see the causes of loss of vision, which are actually painless. That means which are not associated with any pain. Again, based on the progression, we can classify them as gradual, painless, progressive causes and sudden painless causes of vision. So first we'll discuss about the causes of gradual painless progressive cause of vision. So what are the causes of gradual painless progressive loss of vision or diminution of vision? In this we have two categories again the age which is less than 40 years and age which is more than 40 years. So let us see first age which is less than 40 years. So in age less than 40 years the first cause which is very logical to think is refractive errors. As we know that refractive errors like myopia and hypermetropia they are very common in ages which are less than 40 years of age and they are not associated with pain and they are gradually in their progression okay so that is the first cause similarly if you see in age which is above 40 years of age what is the uh, counterpart in refractive errors that we see we see press biopia that is age related decrease in the neovision and decrease in the accommodation then another cause which can we can see in age more than 40 years which is gradual and painless and progressive is the progressive pterygia. Now here I will discuss the causes of painless progressive vision by discussing it in an order. So first we will start with the conjunctiva, cornea, then we are going to go back in the eye towards slowly towards the vitreous lens and the retina. So now if you uh, think about the conjunctival causes you can think about a pterygia. As we know the pterygia is the fleshy outgrowth which is coming from the conjunctiva and encroaching on the cornea. So once it encroaches the pupillary area from which the light is passing then it will actually cause the diminution of vision and that is the gradual painless progressive cause of vision and it is seen usually in ages which is above 40 years of age. Next let us talk about the corneal pathology. So in corneal pathologies we have the in ages which is less than 40 years we have corneal dystrophies and one more condition is keratoconus which is the conical cornea right. And corneal dystrophies also are hereditary, therefore they are usually seen in age less than 40 years. Now what will be the counterpart that you see in age more than 40 years in cornea would be corneal degenerations and dystrophy. So degenerations, dystrophy and keratoconus also for most 
in most cases they do not cause any pain and they are a reason for gradual painless progressive loss of vision then let's after cornea let us come to the lens so what is the cause of gradual painless progressive diminution of vision uh, associated with lens in age less than 40 years it is cataracts right so in the cataracts that we see in the younger age groups are usually developmental cataract right so here we are talking about developmental cataracts because they are painless right now similarly in old age if you talk about above 40 years what do we get we get senile cataract now coming to the retina and the optic uh, optic nerve in the optic nerve we can have optic atrophy and this optic atrophy also will be painless and the optic atrophy which is associated in children which are less than 40 years of age is the compressive optic atrophy Similarly, if you talk about ages which is more than 40 years of age, the type of optic neuropathy or maculopathy that we see is the drug-induced optic neuropathy. Coming to the retina, in the retina we have the retinitis pigmentosa, okay, which is associated with the black spicules, okay, and associated with the night blindness. Then we can have various types of chorioretinal degenerations and dystrophies in ages less than 40 years of age. Now, in ages which is more than 40 years, you can have again retinitis pigmentosa. Then you can have patients which are present with diabetic retinopathy. They can develop macular edema gradually and they can progress across the stages of diabetic retinopathy. And similarly, in ARMD, that is age-related macular degeneration also, you will have dry type of age-related macular degeneration in which you can have gradual painless progressive loss of vision. So here you have to remember ARMD is associated with gradual painless progressive diminution of vision but it is the dry type of ARMD in which you have drusens okay once it progresses to the wet type in which the choroidal neovascularization membrane comes then it is the sudden loss of vision right so till then it is a gradual loss of vision now let us talk about some of the causes of painless diminution of vision which are sudden to occur now, in the gradual loss of vision, we, uh, we divided that based on the age group, age less than 40 and age more than 40. Here, we are going to divide it uh, based, based on the laterality, whether it is affecting single eye or it is affecting both the eyes. Again, we are going to divide it and classify it so that you can remember it easily, starting from conjunctiva, cornea, and then you go behind, the, that is the lens, and then you go to the retina and the optic nerve. So here in the sudden cause, uh, starting with the lens, okay, you don't have many causes in the cornea, so uh, which are sudden and painless. So in sudden painless, what you get, you can get unilaterally is in the lens, we can have subluxation or dislocation of lens. Okay, so when the lens is partially away uh, from its normal anatomical position, it is called subluxation. When it is totally uh, displaced from its normal position, then that is called dislocation of the lens, right? So uni it is usually unilateral, which occurs secondary to trauma. And sometimes patients might have Marfan syndrome and uh, diseases like that, which are associated with weakness of zonules and long zonules because of which there might be subluxation or dislocation of the lens. One more cause of unilateral sudden painless diminution of vision is vitreous hemorrhage. So vitreous hemorrhage sometimes might not, uh, vitreous hemorrhage is usually not associated with pain, especially if it is not associated with trauma. So there are various causes of vitreous hemorrhage which can cause sudden painless diminution of vision. Then you go to the retina. In retina, retinal detachment. If the neurosensory retina gets separated from the retinal pigment epithelium, that can lead to a sudden painless diminution of vision. Similarly, retinal vascular occlusions like central retinal artery occlusion, central retinal vein occlusion, they can also cause the sudden painless diminution of vision. Then we have exudative ARMD also called the wet age-related macular degeneration in which you are going to get this uh, choroidal neovascular membrane in the macula and that can bleed suddenly into the vitreous and into the retina along with the exudation and therefore that can also cause a sudden painless diminution of vision in single eye. Coming to what are some of the causes when the patient is going to have diminution of vision in both the eyes and that too suddenly without any pain. So what if the patient develops an occipital infarction? That means some sort of stroke which is affecting both the occipital lobe. So in that case, patient can have bilateral diminution of vision. Then atypical optic neuritis. Now optic neuritis usually causes pain. 
right? So there is pain associated with optic neuritis and it usually affects single eye, right? However, in a typical optic neuritis, patients will not have pain and both the eyes can get affected. And that is the reason a typical optic neuritis is here in this category of sudden painless diminution of vision and not the simple optic neuritis. Then, diabetic retinopathy also sometimes can cause sudden painless diminution of vision. How? When there is PDR, suppose there is proliferate diabetic retinopathy and suddenly there is a vitreous hemorrhage or a, a vitreous hemorrhage or subretinal hemorrhage in these patients with CSME or macular edema, it can cause bilateral diminution of vision. Similarly, grade 4 hypertensive retinopathy with macular star, they can cause bilateral. Now, since these are systemic diseases, diabetes and hypertension, they are going to affect basically both the eyes and they are usually do not cause any kind of pain in the patient then the optic neuropathy which uh, patients can have and which can cause sudden painless diminution of vision is toxic optic neuropathy similarly because because this toxins will be present systemically it is going to affect both the eyes together right and it is sudden most of the times uh, example methanol poisoning okay uh, acutely patients will develop acutely diminution of vision uh, with such kinds of agents toxic agents then posterior uveitis usually uh, if it is not associated with anterior uveitis can also cause sudden painless diminution of vision however uveitis usually uh, has a lot of pain associated but posterior uveitis uh, can sometimes present insidiously and can also cause sudden diminution of vision when there is vitritis and uh, it can actually have an insidious it can grow very slowly coming to the diminution of vision with pain and redness so if there is associated pain present in the patient along with redness so what are the causes of loss of vision in such cases so again you can divide it into sudden and gradual causes so sudden diminution of vision along with pain and redness will occur in patients who are suffering with acute angle closure glaucoma now another name and the old name according to the old classification was acute congestive glaucoma now glaucoma as we know is associated with pain especially the acute uh, episode will definitely be associated and there will be circumcellary congestion which will lead to redness in the eye similarly acute iridocyclitis or anterior uveitis can definitely cause pain and pain is occurring because of the stimulation of the ciliary uh, ciliary body uh, which is present in the anterior part of the eye and uh, because of the inflammation of the ciliary body we have pain and similarly we have redness now retrobulbar neuritis which is inflammation of the optic nerve behind the eyeball that can also associate uh, be associated with pain right so you might not see redness however you might not see any signs in the retina as well in retrovulvar neuritis but you might have pain in such cases similarly acute infection of the eye acute or chronic endophthalmitis is associated with severe redness pain and even hypopion in such cases then patients who have undergone any chemical injury or mechanical injury definitely any injury will lead to pain and at the same time it will cause redness as a reaction now, what are the causes of gradual uh, diminution of vision associated with pain and redness? Same thing, chronic uveitis, that is chronic iridocyclitis. Patients who have come up with ulcers, who have bacterial ulcer or fungal ulcer, viral ulcer for that matter, all of them associated with pain and redness. Endophthalmitis again and then chronic glaucoma also can cause the same problem. After you know these causes, there is an entity which is called transient vision loss. Transient vision loss means a patient is going to have diminution of vision and then the vision is going to recover again. So what are the causes of such transient vision loss? So number one is carotid artery disease. So what happens in carotid artery disease is that the patient has atherosclerosis of the carotid artery and since the carotid artery actually goes and supplies the eyeball uh, and so what happens is this atherosclerosed artery might actually get a thrombus and as the thrombus obstructs the blood flow through this artery there might be transient loss of vision because of decreased blood supply to the eye. However as this thrombus uh, gets dislodged and becomes an embolus the blood flow will again be restored and that will lead to uh, again good 
uh, visual equity in the patient and therefore the vision loss will be transient. So carotid artery disease is one cause. Second is giant cell arthritis. Similarly in giant cell arthritis we have inflammation of all the uh, vessel wall layers and because of which there will be narrowing of the vessel wall. So similarly in migraine and Raynaud disease there will be vasospasms. Those spasms when they occur there will be decreased blood supply and when they are released there will be again blood supply will become normal. Similarly prodromal symptoms of central retinal artery occlusion and severe hypertension and on all these the pathophysiology basically is vasoconstriction vasospasms or decreased or narrowed artery lumen which will decrease the blood supply but somehow they get relieved later and the patients will have transient vision loss so such patients can definitely progress to a more uh, advanced and constant condition like central retinal artery occlusion or central retinal vein occlusion in which the vision loss will then become more of a permanent type rather than transient variety now if you ask the history whether the diminution of vision is present in day or night, again you can classify and diagnose a few conditions. Okay, you can get an idea. The idea of taking a history is that you can have your list of differentials ready before you can jump to, uh, to doing the clinical examination and investigations just by asking the patient about his symptoms. So clinical history is a very important art. Now night blindness and what are the causes of night blindness? Now night blindness is also called nyctalopia. Okay and the various causes are vitamin A deficiency, retinitis pigmentosa, various kinds of choreoretinal degenerations which are called also called the trapezoretinal degenerations then congenital stationary night blindness which is also night blindness but it does not progress and then we have pathological myopia also sometimes can have night blindness and then patients who come with peripheral cortical cataract so let me explain to you this concept so suppose this is the lens and this is the pupil this is your iris now in peripheral cortical cataract the cortical cataract is present in the periphery the central part of the lens is actually clear now such a patient when he goes in the uh, night time outside what happens to the pupil the pupil will get dilated okay so as the pupil gets dilated now more amount of lens will be exposed to the light so this peripheral cortical part of the cataract or the peripheral cortical cataract of the lens which was initially uh, getting escaped because the pupil was small and the rays were passing to the central part of the uh, lens now as the pupil gets dilated the uh, the light is going to pass even through this cortical cataractus part of the lens and therefore the patient will have problem at the night because of the dilated pupil However, in uh, day blindness, which is also called hemorrhalopia, it is seen in all the central nuclear or polar cataract. Now, in the same condition, like said, this is a cat, this is a lens, and now this is totally opposite to that of a cortical cataract. Now, here the uh, cataract is present in the central part of the lens, so central nuclear, or it is present in the posterior pole in the center. Now what happens if the pupil is dilated that means at night the rays of light are going to pass through the clear part of the lens and the patient is not going to have any problem in the night time because the light rays are passing through the clear part of the lens. However such a patient when he suffer when he goes into the bright sunlight the pupil is going to get constricted and now the rays of light are going to pass through the center part of the lens where we have a central lenticular opacity. Now because of that these patients will develop day blindness or hemorrhalopia. So similarly patients who have central corneal opacity also will suffer from the same problem because the pupil will become smaller in the daytime and the light has to pass through that smaller pupil through that central corneal opacity. Similarly central vitreous opacity also is the similar cause. Now what are the causes for loss of vision only for near very common causes? press biopia that is age related decrease in accommodation next what we have is cycloplegia that could be drug induced cycloplegia okay as we know ciliary body is basically involved in accommodation and it allows us to uh, visualize the uh, things which are present at near right so accommodation is that process and ciliary body is basically involved in accommodation so if we, there is paralysis of the ciliary body that is cycloplegia we will have problems in vision for near then internal or total ophthalmoplegia and the other causes insufficiency of accommodation.